Which kind of coupling is installed on the shafts being connected will depend on the application. There are just two basic types, rigid couplings, which provide a solid connection between two shafts, and flexible couplings, which may compensate for some misalignment. Let's look at the rigid types first. One of the simplest rigid couplings is the sleeve coupling. It is a piece of rod with a hole drilled through it and a keyway cut the full length of the inside. Holes are drilled at each end for set screws. The two shafts are connected by pushing them in at each end and tightening the set screws. It allows no movement between the two shafts. Another type of rigid coupling is the split sleeve coupling. This coupling is designed so that the two shafts don't have to be moved to connect them into the coupling. It is split down the middle so the two sides can come together around the shafts. The third common rigid coupling is the flange coupling. These couplings have two flanges, one of which is secured to the end of each shaft. Then the two flanges are bolted together to form the coupling. This type of coupling can be used with two shafts of the same size or with shafts of two different sizes by simply boring each flange half to fit its corresponding shaft. Either the sleeve type coupling or the flange type coupling can be used where shafts can be precisely aligned or where shafts are long enough to counteract the effects of very minor misalignment. The problem with using rigid couplings is that two shafts are rarely able to be perfectly aligned. In addition, many shafts have some end float that the rigid coupling cannot compensate for. Usually the shafts are aligned as accurately as possible, then a flexible coupling is used to compensate for any small degree of shaft misalignment, movement, or deflection. Many different types of flexible couplings are used, but probably the most common is the chain coupling. Chain sprockets with specially shortened and hardened teeth are attached to each shaft. Then a piece of double chain is wrapped around them to make the coupling. Chain couplings are flexible enough to tolerate about half of one degree of angular misalignment. They're relatively rugged and they're economical. Chain coupling sprockets are available with taper lock hubs and with QD or quick disconnect hubs. These special hubs clamp themselves to shafts of different sizes, so the bore of the sprocket does not have to fit the shaft precisely. Another type of chain coupling uses standard stock sprockets, like those for power transmission chain drives. These sprockets may be taper lock, QD, or they may have a standard stock bore. The chain for this coupling is special Delrin chain, which has several advantages. It requires no lubrication, it allows for one full degree of misalignment, and the pins can be removed to disconnect or reconnect the chain. Although chain couplings are frequently installed without a cover, the use of a cover and grease lubrication will extend the life of the coupling, in some cases by as much as two or three times. Covers may be plastic or they may be metal. Another common type of flexible coupling is the gear coupling. Each side of this coupling consists of two parts. One part is a gear that is mounted on the shaft. The other part, a cover, has internal teeth that mesh with the teeth of the gears on the shaft. The two halves are bolted together to assure correct alignment. The gear coupling can also be assembled with shear pins between the halves. Applying too much rotary force or torque to the coupling shears off the pins. The coupling halves, along with the shafts they're attached to, run free. A gear coupling with shear pins is used as a torque limiting device. Many gear couplings allow one full degree of misalignment. To allow for greater misalignment, some manufacturers curve the teeth. Depending upon the curvature, as much as three degrees of angular misalignment are possible. Some manufacturers also provide gear couplings with wider teeth. The wider the teeth, the more end float the coupling can accommodate. Another type of flexible coupling has a flexible center. 
For example, one very basic type uses a small piece of rubber hose which is clamped onto each shaft. Another kind of flexible coupling has a flexible rubber center disc which is inserted between the two coupling halves. A similar coupling has a continuous, flexible center ring with notches that are plugged into each end of the coupling. Together they make a flexible unit that can allow for as much as two or three degrees of misalignment. All the movement takes place in the rubber. Another style of flexible coupling is referred to as a rubber tire coupling. Shafts are connected to both sides of the flexible tire and all the flexing occurs in the tire itself. Another kind of coupling is the steel grid coupling. Its two halves are connected with a continuous grid of flexible steel which locks around the center of the coupling but still permits it to move. The coupling includes a cover.